So if you're uh, just joining us, uh, we'll be kicking off the uh, webinar in a couple of minutes. Um, so, uh, but delighted that you can uh, join us today. Uh, the chat box is open. Um, if you'd like to drop a, a note into there, let us know where you're joining us from today. That would be uh, nice to hear. Um, but you're very welcome for now. Laura, I was going to pick up a question with you. Uh, tell me about your time in Killary, or sorry, Delphi. Delphi, many years ago. Um, it was part of the hard diploma in marketing practice in NUI Galway. Uh -oh. So it was my work placement. Uh -oh. So I started out as a marketing exec into marketing manager, a bit of sales. Um, from a branding perspective, it was an education in selling a three-star hotel and spa to the same audience that you're selling um, or is selling the same property to people looking for a four star hotel and spa and um, an adventure center and schools and mm. all of that. So, yeah, that was where I dipped my toe into the world of comms and branding. Yeah. Um, but no, it's fab. Like, one, I still one, go there. one of the most beautiful places in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I was only there last May. Yeah. Yeah. I, I took a lot of groups to Killary. Uh, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if they're arch enemies across the water, but um, <laughs> I think there's a lot of collaboration as well. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the relationship is good. But yeah, if a school comes to Delphi over Killary, we're not we don't cry over it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And and I'm delighted to see how you still say we. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've got lots of very very good memories of um, uh, climbing up things and. Uh, Going racing up and down the uh the fjord in a in a in a motorboat, uh so uh, definitely a beautiful beautiful place. Yeah, no, it's it's fab. As a Mayo person, I'm I'm very happy to uh to represent the Delphi side of it because Delphi's technically in Mayo. Of course, um, but it's yes, it's address is Galway, so we we have to try and clarify that. Because I believe the county border runs down the the middle of the fjord. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we used to do all our advertising with Lina and County Galway on it. And this one person used to ring every single time we would feature anywhere kind of publicly with complaints into the hotel that we were saying we're from Galway when we're actually from Mayo. <laughs> so I'm not the only, I'm not the only diehard. I think referring to it as uh, Connemara is probably the safe way out, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Very good. My toolbar across the screen. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, so again, uh, just to say welcome. Uh, if you're joining us, we might just give uh, another minute. I know it's just struck one o'clock, so we'll start very, very shortly. Uh, we might just give the opportunity for one or two more to drop in. I know it's uh, a lunchtime seminar, um, so people will be coming out of meetings, etc uh to uh to drop into it uh, but we will start shortly in the meantime if you want to drop a comment into the chat box uh let us know where you're uh you're joining us from that would be great Thank you, Hugh. Got the ball rolling. In from Dublin. Freezing cold Dublin today. I'm not sure if the temperature outside is uh, risen above zero degrees. I uh, parked my car this morning. It was zero all the way in. Uh, not sure if it's warmed up at all. I haven't been outside since. Bright and sunny, but I'd say freezing cold still. Mervyn with us from Dublin as well. Anybody joining us from outside of Dublin today? We'll be admitting to it anyway. Liam's in Dublin as well. It's all the dubs today. Very good. Um, well, I tell you what we'll do. I think it's uh we we are very kind of conscious of your time. 
um and uh, uh thank you for for joining us um uh, <laughs> thank you peggy in dublin by hardness in wexford <laughs> excellent um so i would like to uh i'm going to kick off and uh and welcome you formally uh to our uh webinar today uh delighted that you could all take time to uh, to join us and i hope that you'll find the webinar uh really informative uh and stimulating uh and a really good investment um of your your hour or so or perhaps less um we'll have uh, uh, as you can see in terms of our uh, agenda for the day uh, we're looking forward to hearing from Professor Pat Gibbons, um, who will be sharing some of his um, insights around the whole area of strategic leadership and relating that to our um, strategy and innovation diploma. Um, and we'll be hearing a little bit later from uh, Laura Nolan and Leah Moore, past participants uh, on our diplomas. Both Laura and Leah um, have uh, have had have undertaken more than one diploma. Um, so we're getting kind of bang for buck today uh, in terms of their experience. Um, and we're very aware that uh, you would be particularly interested in, in hearing from them. So we'll make sure we get them uh, into the conversation. There's a lot of time uh, to uh, for them to share their experiences. Um, throughout the course of this, the chat box is open uh, and we would be delighted if, uh, if you have a, a question or a comment uh, when Pat is sharing, it may be a question or a comment, uh, or indeed when you hear from Laura and Leah, we'd love you to get involved uh, in this. Uh, we want it to be as, as interactive as, as, as possible. Um, so please do feel free to contribute to the chat box as we go along. We'll monitor it, keep an eye on it, uh, and pick up the, the questions as they come in. Um, all the usual etiquette, obviously, uh, on a call like this, if you can keep uh, muted that will be very helpful just to kind of eradicate any background noise and make sure the experience um, is as good as it possibly can be. Uh, I should of course introduce myself. Tim Ray is my name and I am the uh, director of Smurfit Executive Development uh, and delighted to be uh, hosting uh, this webinar uh, today. Um, I want to say just a couple of words um, in the first instance, as as way of uh, introduction, um, I'm going to assume that the fact that you find your way onto this webinar means you know uh, everything you need to know about UCD uh, and the uh, Michael Smurfit Graduate School of Business. Um, however, I am going to to indulge in in one slide. I think it's uh, very helpful, particularly if you're not as familiar with the school um, as others. Um, just as a way of introduction and to uh, largely give you that assurance um, that you're in the right place um, and that if you come and participate on one of our programs, you can be assured of a uh, truly world-class experience. That phrase world-class gets used uh, very loosely these days, I think. Um, but just to provide some kind of proof points on that, uh, these are our some of our most recent Financial Times rankings. Uh, the Financial Times ranking is the preeminent ranking of uh, business schools globally. Um, and uh, the most recent rankings came out in uh, December at the beginning of the month. Um, and uh, the Michael Spurford School was once again ranked as the number one business school in Ireland um, and number one ranked for open enrollment programs. Uh, and of course, the diploma programs that we are focusing on here today uh, are open enrollment programs. Um, so these rankings benchmark us with the very best in the world. Uh, and I hope that that gives you assurance and reassurance uh, that if you invest both your time and your finance in coming to a Smurfit program, you can be assured of a top quality learning experience. And I'm hoping and uh, expecting that that when Laura and uh, Leah share with us a little bit later on, uh, that they can elaborate on that and, and perhaps uh, support that contention as well. Um, of course, we're focusing on our suite of diplomas um, here today. I'm not going to go down this in any detail, um, but just to uh, perhaps emphasize a few things. This is our uh, entire uh, portfolio running in the spring. 
Uh, of course, uh, today we're, we're choosing to focus on our diploma in strategy development and innovation. Uh, you'll be hearing shortly from Pat, who's the program director for that program. A uh, couple of other things to maybe highlight here. Uh, one is our diploma in leadership development. That starts in a few weeks time. Um, and just to highlight that there are very limited places, one or two places remaining on that um, at most. Um, so a lot of demand to get on that program. Uh, so if leadership is the program that you have a particular interest in, um, do act quickly to make sure you secure your place. Um, and then also just to emphasize or just to highlight the three new diplomas uh, that you can see there, professional diploma in aviation finance, uh, very much directed to that sector, AI and business analytics, and sustainable supply chain practice. Um, so three brand new diplomas, um, uh, one in a sector that is thriving in Ireland. Uh, I think Ireland is the uh, uh, leading uh, location uh, globally for the aviation sector. Um, and then two areas that are very much uh, uh, predominant in the minds of, of uh, organizations that certainly we're interacting with around AI and the whole area of um, sustainability. Um, and particularly as that applies to supply chain practice. So uh, that is our uh, suite of uh, programs coming up in the uh, in the springtime. Um, uh, start dates spreading from uh, sort of, uh, beginning middle of February um, through into late April and, and May. Uh, full details are on our website. Um, so uh, I'm delighted. Uh, that we've got Pat with us uh, today, Professor uh, Pat Gibbons. Uh, Pat, as I've said already, is uh, he's a professor of strategic management uh, and also the program director for our uh, executive diploma in strategy and innovation and for our diploma in uh, organizational change as well. Uh, Pat has led these programs for, for several years um, and I would say at this point in time has probably uh, put several hundred uh, participants um, through his hands uh, in those programs, uh, many of those now filling some of the uh, biggest seats in Irish industry. Um, so uh, that strategy thinking is seeing it all its way all the way from, uh, from the classroom here uh, into the executive team and boardrooms um, around the country. Um, Pat also uh, leads some of our biggest bespoke programs, custom programs that we run um, in a tailored way for specific companies um, and has worked uh, globally um, uh, and, and brings that kind of global experience to bear in terms of what he does in the classroom. So what we've asked uh, Pat to do today is uh, uh, give you a little flavor for uh, what is covered on the program um, I think he's going to, to do that by uh, looking at some of the essential skills of strategic leaders and connecting that back to the program. Um, so, Pat, uh, delighted to have you with us. Um, and uh, I think you've got a maximum of, I think, two slides here. So I'm going to I'm going to move it on. If you want to be to take the slides down, you can let me know that uh, if you'd like me to move a slide on. Uh, and I'm happy to do that as well. Just give me a shout and I will look after that. So, Pat, you're very welcome and over to you. Thanks very much, Tim, for the introduction. And folks, delighted to be here and delighted that you have an interest in the Strategy Diploma. Um, the Strategy Diploma, I'm very proud to say, is our, is our best-selling diploma um, in Smurfit Executive Development. And I think, you know, no matter what else we're doing, I think the, the experience we've had um, and the participant experience has been has been strong and, and that's made it a great seller. What I wanted to do was to inform you about the program and its contents, but I thought the best way to do that was to, to think about, well, you know, what are the skills that a strategic leader needs? And then maybe to relate that to the program. So there's a piece in Harvard Business Review a few years ago, uh, which I liked, and it speaks to you know, the sort of six strategic leadership skills. And I'm going to go through each of them in 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 turn. And after I finish that, I'll, I'll just touch on how, how in the diploma we try to touch on these. And, you know, strategy tends to be about making decisions in the present that have long-term consequences. 
Uh, you know, so major investment decisions, major expansion decisions, major growth decisions, M&A type decisions. Um, so those types of decisions, given the fact that we're making them now and they're, you know, they have a long lead time and they have future consequences, um, the ability to maybe anticipate uh, becomes important. And, you know, how, you know, important for a strategic leader to sort of develop anticipatory skills, to think about how the world is changing around us. And, you know, some of the suggestions that people, you know, make or that the, these authors make in this paper is about, you know, naturally uh, being engaged with customers and suppliers. And, and this may sound surprising to you, but what, what I found is, you know, that as executives develop and progress up the corporate hierarchy, they, they may become less, uh, you know, less in contact or less exposed to customers and suppliers and how customers are changing and how customer requirements are changing and how supply chains are changing. So, you know, important to, to, to keep that in mind. So being open to, to customers and suppliers. Again, thinking about fast growing rivals, and again, what they say is they, they say, don't copy them, but they say, examine actions that puzzle you. So so being competitively aware, yeah, how are my competitors changing? How are they growing? What's their risk appetite? They may have a very different risk appetite to you. And that may explain why they're growing faster. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that you're not growing as fast, but nonetheless, are you comfortable with the rate of growth that you're having in your organization? Naturally, think about customers you've lost and attend why. And then they say an interesting thing, which attend conferences, events, and other industries. You know, to, to sort of develop one's peripheral vision, to develop the peripheral vision around how are other industries changing and what implication might that have for our industry? Are there, are there lessons to be learned from how other industries are changing? to our industry. Now, one of the great things that you will have the benefit of if you join our diploma is that you will be with a set of peers who come from very different industries. So in a way, one is circumventing this suggestion uh, because you're going to be working very intensively with a group of other people who come from totally different industries to you. And so that will give you great insight into how other industries are changing, how other businesses are grappling with strategic issues and strategic problems. And again, what you may, you will draw a lot from that. And, and through discussion, through interaction, over coffee or whatever, uh, you're gonna really get a lot from, from, from your peers. So that's the anticipatory skills. Challenge is about, you know, really about uncovering our assumptions. Every, again, because we're making decisions now that have future consequences, there's going to be a raft of assumptions that underpin many of those decisions. And what's vitally important is that we're aware of those assumptions and that we can test those assumptions. And in many ways, you know, Mr. Toyota, the founder of the Toyota manufacturing company, the Toyota car company, said, you know, root cause analysis is really important. And he suggests apply the five whys. So if you ask the why question five times in a row, you will eventually get to root causes. So a nice little discipline is to apply the five whys. The next three points here are really about the same thing. And that is, how do I engender conflict into a decision-making situation so that I surface the implicit assumptions that are underpinning our strategy or our key decisions. Because naturally, it's a decision about the future. We're uncertain. When we're uncertain, we can either find out about what makes us uncertain, or we might have to make an assumption. And it's not necessarily the assumptions that we write down that are the ones that are important. It's the assumptions that we don't write down. What assumptions are we making about customers? What assumptions are we making about competitors? What assumptions about are we making about how technology is changing? What are the hidden assumptions? What are the tacit assumptions that underpin our strategy and our key decisions? I spoke, spoke briefly about data, getting data, getting, getting, getting data about the future. You know, again, when we're interpreting data or we're looking at data um, and in a world of data analytics and in a world of data munificence, where there's lots and lots of data available, it's really important to think about how do we consider data? How do we consider evidence? And again, what these authors suggest is, listen, 
there are multiple ways to interpret data. And the important thing is maybe to get multiple perspectives on the data and ask ourselves, is this data ambiguous? What alternative signals am I getting from this data? So what's an alternative way of interpreting what I'm looking at? The tables that I'm confronted with, the, the data that I'm confronted with. What, what interpretation am I making? What conclusion am I drawing? And are there alternative conclusions to be drawn from that? So, so these are very much underpinning a decision-making approach to strategy. And because it's decision-making, Tim, we can pop on to the next one. It is usually about decision-making. So, you know, how do we decide? And again, what these authors suggest is, well, listen, can we reframe binary decisions by asking what other, other options do we have? So instead of a yes, no decision, perhaps, is there a middle path? What alternatives are we considering? And this, to me, is the essence of strategy. Because really, across business schools around the world, we teach the same techniques, we teach the same approaches. What's going to be different is what creativity, what additional insight are you bringing? And part of that additional insight is to generate creative alternatives. So what creative alternatives am I considering in terms of how I should approach my strategy, how I should compete? How do I inject creativity into the process? How do I inject innovation into the process? And again, you know, that's a generative task that requires real consideration as to how I stimulate creativity. How do I stimulate what might be called proprietary insight? But how do I stimulate additional insight into my process? And am I satisfied with the, maybe with the strategy making process that I have? Am I satisfied that I'm generating enough creativity into the process? So, you know, strategy development is, you know, it's not just a mechanical art. It's not just a, you know, let's specify our objectives, let's think about the environment, let's think about alternatives. One needs to inject creativity throughout the process. Naturally, part, part of the strategy issue is developing the strategy, thinking about the strategy, thinking about what it should do, thinking about how we position ourselves in the future. But strategy will only happen through people. So how do I get people aligned and lined up to help execute the strategy? So again, the points they make here, here are communicate early and often to avoid don't hold me, no one asked me. Reach out to resistors directly to understand their concerns. So rather than assuming, oh, these people always resist, what is their concern and how do we address their concerns? And naturally using structured meetings to understand concerns. So rather than, you know, just using unstructured meetings or, you know, meetings by a coffee patch, you know, show the respect to resistors to really consider why are you resisting and how can we address the concerns if we can? Sometimes you can't, that's fair enough. But if we can, how do we do it? And the final aspect, and this to me is absolutely critical. Again, I go back to the notion that we're making decisions in the face of uncertainty. Things will happen which we didn't predict. Things will happen which we couldn't have predicted. So as we execute our strategy, we need to, we need to learn. Am I, is my execution correct? Is the strategy that I'm executing correct? Are the objectives that I've set myself the correct ones, given the fact that the world is changing around us and the world is changing around us in ways which we couldn't have predicted? So one needs to be adaptive. One needs to learn. One needs to be able to roll with the punches. And how adaptable is my strategy and how adaptable is my strategy-making process to accommodate the unforeseen circumstances the unforeseen opportunities that may emerge over any sort of planning cycle or planning horizon that we may have. So this to me are the six critical skills, okay? Now, if we just roll back to the previous slide, Tim, I just wanna highlight a couple of things. So we have six modules in the, in the diploma. And the first couple of modules, which are labeled strategic leadership and strategy in a turbulent environment, they really are about enhancing our anticipatory skills and enhancing our interpretation skills. 
you'll be exposed extensively to cases that look at decision situations that are confronting organizations, and you'll be put in the shoes of the decision maker, where you have to figure out, what, what would I do here? And what's fantastic is you're not, on, you're not alone. <laughs> you're with a bunch of peers, a group of peers who are grappling with the same issue. And around the table, we'll try to come up with, right, what's the preferred approach here? What's the, what's the, what's, which, what do we recommend? So you're enhancing your anticipatory and your interpretation skills in that process. So that's the first couple of, of modules. If I speak to challenge and decision-making, which is the next slide, Tim. Thank you. So challenge and decision. There's an entire module given to top management teams and decision making. And in that module, we talk about how do we inject, let's say, conflict into decision making? How, what is the role of devil's advocate? How do we how do we actually execute a devil's advocacy approach? And how does the top management team go about making strategic decisions? First of all, what is the strategic decision? And how might a top management team go about making those strategic decisions? And in particular, there's a case study about the adoption of a new technology, which you'll be exposed to. And really, you have to think through, right, how do I anticipate the future? How do I interpret the data? How do I challenge each other around the table? And ultimately, what decision do I recommend in terms of a path forward for the organization? Alignment, we have a, we have a, a module called Leading Innovation and Change, and that is taught by a colleague of ours from, from Canada, from the Ivy Business School. So you get international exposure here. And he'll really speak to, you know, how do I lead innovation and change? How do I, how do I get people on board? How do I, once I have the strategy, how do I align people? And the whole learning thing will take place, you know, through a number of modules. First of all, I spoke about innovation and creativity. So we have a module on business model innovation, which is incredibly popular with, with students because it's intensely practical. And one is given a toolkit uh, that we're going to apply immediately. And I would say that's true about many of the modules. What we're interested in ensuring is that you have the appropriate toolkit uh, to apply and to deploy that toolkit in your situation. So that's really the diploma, Tim. Um, and hopefully those six skills, yeah, you'll get those these slides, I'm sure. Um, these skills may be helpful to you. So thanks for your attention. And I'd very much look forward to seeing you in class and, and, and meeting you and, and grappling with these exciting issues with you. Thank you. Pat, uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to linger for a few minutes uh, here and um, I've got a question I want to ask you, uh, but um, I, it's also an invite to anybody, uh, any of the participants on the webinar today, uh, if you'd like to ask a question or comment on anything uh, that Pat has said, feel free to drop that into the uh, the chat box and uh, we'll pick it up. Um, one of the questions that came, uh, comes to mind, uh, Pat, you, you were talking in that first slide about you know, anticipating a, uh, I think um, you know there's a colleague of uh, Rita McGrath who we both know has a, a new book called Seeing Around Corners, um, but I'm kind of struck by uh, what might be in your experience and perhaps this links into the organizational change module. Um, what are some of the barriers to that? I'm thinking about things like the success paradox and so on. Yeah. Uh, so how how difficult, how challenging is it in your experience yeah. for senior execs to get into that space? Yeah, so I th I think it's it's extremely difficult, and and you mentioned the success paradox. I mean, the, the, in many ways, the hardest thing to adapt to, the hardest thing to change is an organization that has had a history of success, because naturally, yeah, you know, we've been successful in the past with a certain recipe. What, why, why in God's name would we want to change any of this? And it's I'm not, I wouldn't advocate change for the sake of change but it is rather to think about how the world is changing around us and how we need to adapt to changing circumstances. And the recipes of the past that brought us success in the past may not, may not work in the future. I, I'm reminded of a book at the individual level written by a, a famous coach 
uh, what what got you here won't get you there, and 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 that's very much true for the individual executive. I mean, you you know, you progress through your career, and the things that brought you success up at a middle management level are not necessarily the same things you can carry to an executive level. So you have to adapt, you have to change, you have to develop. And the analogy is perfect because it's the same for the organization. The world is changing around us, uh, as we can see, even geopolitically uh, at the moment. It's 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 the world is in, in turmoil. And that has severe, you know, significant consequences for organizations, even on supply chains at the moment. Uh, it's very significant consequences. So one has to be able to adapt. Uh, and so, you know. Getting getting diverse people around the table is one way to to sort of try and think about this. You know, what alternative perspectives do we have uh, around what's happening? You know, getting people to think about ah, and I, I didn't think about it that way. That has implications for me. So so trying to blend in this diversity uh, is is critically important in my view. Tim. I, I'm catching up. Um, I'm about I think three years behind uh, on the TV program Succession. Uh, yeah. and, and Logan Roy seems to be the antithesis of this. Uh, yeah. But I'm only I'm only in I've only got the end of, of uh, season two, and, and he only seems to be going downhill at the moment. But I'm I'm I'll wait and see. <laughs> Does the theory yeah. play out in practice? No spoilers. Sure. <laughs> um, there are a couple of questions coming in uh, uh, yeah. practicalities about the program, Pat, and I sure. want to wrap another question in with it. Uh, yeah. I think Sinead is asking a question about class size, typically. Yeah. And if I can just uh, connect that to also uh, the question about you alluded, you, you mentioned at one stage the uh, the case study uh, mm. and the need to kind of challenge people around the table and so on. And it it struck me that the process mm. of learning within the classroom there's a there's very much a development of executive skill uh, yeah. in that sense and a practicing of executive skill um, as well as a kind of a chalk and talk. Um, so class size process if you want to kind of bundle those two things together sure thanks tim so and thanks to the class size maximum 30 i'd say maybe 31 32 absolute maximum uh and the configuration of the class just to mention that we we tend to pe put people at, at you're sitting around the table with five or six other people and we naturally change the composition of those tables every day that we're going through the program. So you meet more and more participants. So that's that's just the, if you like, the physical logistics of, of the class. So class size is 30. So over the six sessions, you will form a very, you know, a, a nice close relationship with your classmates. And that's achieved because I'd say, you know, in most of the classes, yeah, you know, every half hour you're going to be posed, or every 45 minutes you're going to be posed an issue that you're working on together uh, to come up with a solution. And that may be that we've given you a case study that we expect you to read in advance. And, and there is, you know, there is, you know, there is a fair bit of reading in this module, in this, in this program in particular. Um, but it, it pays off, uh, it, and it pays off in the sense of if everyone's prepared to the same level, then the quality of the conversations are incredibly rich. And the quality of the insights become incredibly rich. You'll discuss the situations at your table, and then we'll have an we tend to have an open discussion then about the issues raised in the cases or the readings. So the the process is certainly not um, individuals talking from PowerPoint for long periods. Um, it is highly interactive uh, because we, what we're interested in is, if you like, developing your judgment. Um, so we want to hear what your judgment is about those situations that you're confronted with, what your perspective is, given your experience. And it's the blend then of experience around the room that really fosters, you know, uh, creative insight, mutual learning. And, and in many ways, yes, my colleagues, we are expert in the area, but a big part of our role is to facilitate the learning in the room. Yes, we will contribute with with insight, with expertise, but in addition, there's a wealth of experience and expertise in the room as well, and we want to make sure that that's leavened across the room. Excellent. Thanks, Pat. And and uh, I, I recall a, a title of a program run by a previous colleague, Leadership and the Art of Judgment, and you use that word judgment, and, and so much, of course, about strategic thinking is is that judgment. is that informed judgment and that that art of judgment. Yeah. Um, I see both Liam and Dermot have asked similar questions around 
assessments, Liam says, are module assessments individual or team-based or both? Sure. And Dermot asks, are there a number of assignments and or written exams? I think I can say okay. there are no written exams. There are no written exams. And, and I would say in this diploma, most of the assignments are individually based assignments. Uh, and sorry, and the reason we do that is, uh, uh, sorry, a lot of the task assignments in class will be team-based, but but they may not be graded. The graded assignments tend to be individual. And the reason we do that is you, you guys have busy lives uh, and it may be difficult for you to schedule uh, meeting time together to work on a, a team assignment. So we've we've tended to, to rely on individual assignments. Um, but most of those assignments are about how would I apply these concepts to my situation? So they're intensely practical. Again, they're very applied. And they're very applied to transfer the learning from the classroom to your situation. So, thank, and I hope that that I think that's a very clear answer. Uh, I hope that's helpful for for Liam uh, and uh, and Mervin has just jumped in. Uh, uh, thanks to you. Are there any programs focused on developing leadership skills when moving from an individual contributor role into team management? Pat, either of us can have a go at that. But do you want to? Well, I th certainly our program, sorry, so very specifically, I would say many of our programs facilitate that. One in particular is very much focused on, if you like, individual leadership skill development, which is our diploma in leadership development. Um, but I would say also that some of our other diplomas, this one, for instance, uh, maybe the Diploma in Organization Change, it, it, you know, provide, if you like, content areas which may be useful to you as you move up in your leadership role but in terms of individual skill behavior the process of leadership the diploma in leadership development is very much focused on that and i would characterize some of our other diplomas here in terms of supply chain strategy organization change as providing if you like domain expertise that would help you uh develop your leadership role i'm not sure whether that's clear, clear but is that, might, I'm, 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 you might have a I would call a little model of, of strategic leadership that talks about thinking strategically, acting strategically, and engaging strategically. Uh, and the thinking strategically obviously is around analysis and the thought process. Mm -hmm. The acting strategically are the decision making, the decisions you take now that inform the yep. future. And the engaging strategically is very much into the depth of the leadership. Who, who, who am I and how do I impact and align the organization? Strategic leadership is what we're talking about here today captures all three of those elements um yeah. so uh, and i think all of uh for me our diplomas uh tend to tune up uh elements of those tune up and tune down they're all all of those elements are in all of our programs but they get uh, as i say tuned up or tuned down depending on the particular um emphasis uh pat thank you very much really great uh great insight and i think some great uh coverage about the program practicalities, process, et cetera. And I hope people have found that uh, really helpful. Um, what, what I'm going to do now is, uh, because we're all very conscious that um, uh, it's great to hear from, from people like Pat and myself, um, but hearing from other participants is also something that is hugely valuable. Uh, they have walked in your, your shoes um, and hearing their experiences uh, is uh, really, really helpful. And I'm delighted that uh, Laura Nolan and Leah Moore have uh, joined us today. Um, and uh, I'm going to ask them some questions um, and they are going to hopefully share some of their experiences on the back of that. And again, can I keep encouraging you to uh, drop questions uh, into the, uh, the chat box? Feel free to make this as much your webinar as we possibly can make it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is welcome Laura and Leah, and maybe in turn, just ask you to give us a, a very brief to 60 second overview of, uh, of your, your, your role at present. What, what is your, uh, what is your job and what, what do you do at present? What occupies your professional time at this point in time? Laura, perhaps you might like to go first. Yeah. Um, hello everyone. Um, so at the moment I am a freelance marketing kind of business growth consultant. So when I did the two diplomas that I did with um, Smurfit, I was a 
um, strategy and business development director in a marketing agency. And subsequent to finishing the strategy development and innovation, I decided to leave. And so I think my intent is to kind of move into the business operations consultancy. And in that interim, I'm kind of building up those that skill set. So I work with two kind of key clients on that, working with them on different aspects of their business and how to scale them and grow them. Um, so one is in the media space and one is in kind of marketing and event space. And, and immediately, Laura, I, 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 I'm uh, triggered to kind of ask you the question, uh, the chicken and egg. Uh, did you come to the program to prepare for that new departure in your career or did the program cause you to trigger that new departure in your career? Which was the chicken and which was the egg? The program, uh, oh. I suppose, motivated me to move on. Interesting. Um, okay, very interesting. Think, yeah. Interesting to hear that. So having you you went through the program, experienced the learning from the program, and, and it began to open up new vistas and new possibilities. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Thank Laura, thanks for coming back to you. Leah, same question. Uh, if you wouldn't mind giving us a, a a very brief overview of your role, your business, and so on, which I know is 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 equally interesting. Yeah, um, so um, I am a, a director in, in strategy in my family's business, um, and that is um, the Hugh Cafe Company, and we're contract catering. Um, so it's a highly competitive market, um, quite volatile. And um, I suppose this program really helped me to uh, work with the team and um look at um i suppose quite an undefined strategy uh, which is often the case in family business and um build out this role that i'm in now whereby we're we're really working to be uh, far more strategic um and making moves um that will benefit the long term uh, elements of the business and also um, helping us to make decisions on, on what we don't need to do, uh, which is really important because often as a smaller family business, you, you tend to take whatever's coming your way, uh, even if that may not benefit you in the long term. And um, so this this program was is really, really key in us kind of gaining that context and confidence to, to kind of create this element in the business um, that is more focused on strategy. Uh, and, and, and Leah, I'm very interested in the, way you've, the, the language that you use there. It, it, it has resonances of uh, what Laura said, but in a slightly different kind of context. You, you talked about um, filling out the role uh, and it, it sounds where you've, you've phrased that like uh, the knowledge, the insight, the skills, et cetera, that you kind of gain from the program help you almost expand and shape the role in a, in a different way, am, am I am I over egging it, or does that uh, did I hear yeah, you right? Without a doubt, pretty much from from module one, this role started to be built out, and every single module thereafter, it was so incredibly practical that the learnings that I could implement, um, with the family, um, were almost immediate, and the benefits, um, were um astronomical. So with every single module that I went through this role was created and defined more um, explicitly. And and Laura, if I can ask you a, a question, I'll come back to uh to Leah and, and maybe I'm I'm taking you a, a step back when I when I ask this question. Um I'm interested what triggered your interest and your motivation in engaging in this kind of learning journey in the first instance. Um and, and almost of, of equal interest is you, you went through I know, one diploma and then came back for more. Uh, so uh, what triggered that initial interest and then what caught you, what brought you back? Um, so the initial course that I did was the high performance sales and business growth. Um, I was, after progressing into a kind of commercial director role within the agency, I would have a very, I suppose, natural style with regards to sales. Um, and I felt that maybe I needed a bit more structure um, in how I approached the sales process. And I thought the company and the agency needed a bit more structure in general as to how we did it. So that's what motivated me to do the sales course. Um, and I loved it. Um, and I suppose I hadn't done any education since I did my postgrad when I was about 24. 
And um, so there, there was like a aging myself, but there was about an 11, 12 year gap. Um, and I found that I was so motivated in work based off what I was learning in college. And I'd be coming in after each module of a weekend being like, we have to start doing this and we have to start integrating that. So I found it personally and professionally motivating and learned a huge amount. Um, and then when the strategy and development and innovation course came up, it was kind of a logical progression. Also, obviously, it's quite appealing to kind of complete the three of them. So I think after I did the first one, I really liked it. I was like, um, keep going down that route. Um, and the elements of strategy that I did in the um, sales course and leadership, I really like had a, I suppose, a, an inherent interest in that. So, you know, strategy is is now my go to. Like, I'd, I would say I spent 12 years doing marketing. And I would now, if somebody asks me what I do, I would rarely kind of describe myself as a digital marketer. I would say I'm kind of strategic growth um, and organizational growth and, and organizational structure. So my trajectory from a career perspective is definitely to get more into the strategy development side of things. Um, and that was that was the progression. And the next one I'm going to do is the organizational change and transformation, because I think that that probably positions me for the roles that I intend to to go into in the future so I suppose I found it really helpful to be able to tailor make that journey um each of them that I've done uh have have probably swat, altered my my course or my career trajectory but um all in positive ways uh, thanks Laura and, and thank you Peggy for joining us I, I know uh, some people may, will maybe have to jump off as we get closer to two o'clock um uh, you you remind me, uh, Laura, just to, to say three things. And I'm picking up from what you said. One of the things is you're reminding me that um, sometimes people will wonder what the difference is between, say, something like a, a, an executive MBA or an MBA experience and the diploma pathway. And of course, uh, the diplomas are a deep dive into the subject matter uh, and uh, and allow that that kind of very focused exploration uh, of subject areas. Um, Second thing that I am really interested in what you say is uh, that uh, you don't wait to the end of the program to begin to do things or use the uh, use the knowledge. Um, I, I love how you've expressed that that after the end of every module, you're kind of going back to the workplace, you know, bursting with ideas and ready to implement. And I think that is a um, is a is a tremendous kind of way to experience a program where you know, you're here on a Thursday or Friday, and on the Monday morning you're already kind of bringing and applying that uh, knowledge into the place. And you also remind me of uh, talking about the um, uh, doing a number of diplomas, of course, it's really important to to emphasize to to those listening in that um, stackable journey. Um, so if you complete three of our diplomas uh, within a, a five year period, um, that uh, you can obviously progress towards a, a full master's degree and that stackable um, piece. And, and as you have said, Laura, that, that way of tailoring your learning journey um, is, is a really, really important um, uh, piece to underline and emphasize. Leah, can I ask you the a similar question? Um, you know, what kind of triggered the interest in the first place? What kept you going on this pathway? Yeah, absolutely. It's very similar to Laura, actually. Um, so working in the family business, um, you know, our, our sales are very long and drawn out. So you might, um, do, you're, you're, you're competing for contracts against other, other contract catering companies. And you're also competing to retain every three to five years, your contracts. And, um, we were quite reactive. And I also started out, um, in the diploma and high performance sales and business development. And I found it absolutely life-changing. It was just every single module, uh, would blow my mind and I would also go back to the team after every module and say this is what we got to do guys I think they actually started to become quite tired of me every time I was going into Smurfit they go she's going to come back with ideas now and um, to be fair it, it absolutely worked we started seeing really good improvements um, and initially I went in just to do that because it was so specified I was in a, a business development role with within the business and I, I never thought that I would um, consider going on to do more. Um, but once I was in, within within module one, within the introductory day, I was like, I'm hooked. 
I'm here for the long run and um it's taken me a little while to do it um but um I really um would be a huge advocate of it in that it's so applicable it's every single diploma that you choose is a deep dive you know I'm even looking at your other diplomas going I think I'd like to do th four or five you know <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know it was it was a, a very immersive journey and it's a very empowering journey and, and you, you you learn a lot from your co-participants as much as you learn from your 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 lecturers so I, I'm, I'm, thank you for that, Leah. I'm going to pick up something you just said. Um, uh, I'm, and I'm conscious of time, and I, I want to get one question into uh, both Laura and Leah before we uh, we wrap up. Because um, Leah, you I mean you've used two quite compelling words. You said this is life changing was one phrase, uh, and then you also talked about it being very empowering. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I'm sure people uh, listening in on on the webinar uh may think okay yeah I'm, I'm up for that um probably there's a another side of their brain that's saying um what am i letting myself in for uh in terms of the workload the demands uh and people obviously pat a little earlier to uh uh participants on the programs being uh in busy jobs day jobs and obviously family lives and so on as well so laura let me start with you how did you find juggling all of that demand? Um, and have you any advice or what would you say to somebody listening in who might be maybe going, mm, you know, really could I handle all of this? What 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 would you say about that? What does that workload look like, feel like? How did you how did you cope with it? Um, I would say for me, the bulk of the time consumed was would be the prep. So the reading is is probably for me the most time consuming side of it, but it's all about approaching that strategically so we're given the the readings probably a month maybe in advance um you know I'm I tend to be a bit of a last minuter which puts me under pressure but I think if you're the type that's like right I'm going to allocate x amount of time you'll fly through that you know it's all interesting you know and and it's not like you're learning it as in you know verbatim it's just read it make some notes you know it's it's fairly straightforward um the after work, um, the, the assignments, I think everybody approaches them differently. Um, one thing I would say is like, uh, I'm accustomed to kind of writing reports and stuff. So I wasn't really intimidated by that, but I do know a lot of people on the course hadn't been to college in 20 plus years and were quite nervous about the assignments. But they are, as Pat said, they're, they're designed to replicate what you've learned in your own and, and how you apply it to your own industry. So they are quite logical um in in how they they roll out so it's to you know take us kind of step by step approach to it and all of it ultimately you know you know because what you've picked up in the class you've already figured out in your head how you want to manipulate it into your own job so that's ultimately what you're doing um some people approach it in different ways some people allocate x amount of time every week to completing their assignment i'm more of a sit down you know bang it out in in probably a longer one block um but you know I, I would say in terms of pressure and stress now I unlike a lot of people don't have in the strategy course three kids seem to be the magic number um <laughs> I I don't have three kids to to balance um I have the luxury of endless free time um <laughs> outside of my job so you know there was that um but you know, everybody, I think past module one, when you realize what's involved, that the workload is definitely very manageable. Uh, thanks, Laura. It's, it's great uh, insight. And and uh, you said something that really kind of uh, resonated with me but you, and something that's important for us to, to call out um, that, you know, a lot of people coming into the program, particularly if it's their first diploma, may not have sat in this kind of environment for 20 years. Um, and I just want to to say to anybody who might have that thought in their head. So number one, we all fully get that. Um, and secondly, that uh, there's a huge, you know, very supportive uh, uh, infrastructure uh, to, to help you engage, find your feet again in that arena and so on. Um, and certainly my experience of these programs and a number of institutes, including Smurfit, is that um, 
it, typically the the groups are 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 not competitive. They're very uh, collegiate and very supportive, and people are trying to help each other through the uh, the process. Uh, Leah, same kind of question. Um, how did it feel to you? Uh, uh, work life balance demands of the day job demands of the course um what would you say to anybody who was uh considering the program and that might be a barrier in their head yeah absolutely so i suppose you know there is a bit of reading to the program um but i really enjoyed the practicality of it um so i know pat referenced there's you know we worked we worked through case studies i particularly enjoyed the first one being about a vineyard <laughs> um <laughs> You know they're they're incredibly practical and um, they're on um you know a lot of them are on companies that are operating in in the top of the market at the moment so they're quite um they resonate with you and i suppose the assignments were really great in that they allowed us to do reflective pieces on what we've learned in the class and how it's going to impact us and improve our role or improve how we work or um improve our our business and i suppose that's really the beauty of it um in that you get a return almost immediately and that's that's pretty much what i enjoyed the most in that i wasn't bogged down in in heavy academic analysis i was you know going at it straight away saying this is the difference i'm going to make uh, in my role as an individual or as a team player um and that's something i think is of huge importance particularly to these to these programs uh very good and uh, again, i get just going to grab a, uh, something you said there Leah. you said uh, these assignments were really great um mm -hmm. and and uh, I'm sure that the, anybody who is listening in who hasn't been on a program before is probably scratching their head thinking, mm, not so sure about that. Um, but I, 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 it's really interesting to hear that from you because certainly it's my experience as people move through these programs. Dare I say it, I'm not going to maybe stretch it as far as say they begin to enjoy the assignments, but they certainly see them as value creating uh, rather than kind of testing them. So that that being able to sense of using the assignments to work through, make sense of the learning and work out the application of it is a, is very powerful indeed. Okay, I'm conscious it's four minutes to two, I think. We've made a promise to get people uh, out of here by two o'clock. Um, I'm going to ask, um, so Dermot's just saying, uh, will we get a copy of the slides? Yes, you will. Um, I think we'll have a recording of this also available. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Patrick uh, to, uh, to drop in the link um, where you can connect with us if you want to follow up, if you want to inquire further, you'd like to have a one-to-one -one consultation uh, in respect of the uh, the diplomas, uh, Patrick will pop that link into the, uh, the chat box where you can get hold of us. If you have any difficulty at all in that regard, uh, you'll find my email on the website, uh, you'll find Pat's email on the website, um, and if that's your route in, uh, any way in uh, uh, will work and we will make sure you get a response uh, and you hear back from us. Um, I hope uh, you've all found that helpful and useful and a valuable uh, use of your time for the last hour or so. Um, I'd like to ask uh, uh, to thank in particular Laura and Leah for giving us their time. We're delighted that you came along and shared your experiences and a big thank you to Pat uh, for sharing uh, some of that insight uh, and then also talking about uh, the strategy diploma. So folks, let me um, let you go. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope you'll join another webinar uh, very, very soon. Um, and we certainly hope that we will see you uh, on our program. Uh, hopefully this spring, we'd be delighted to see you in person and welcome you to Smurfit. Thank you very much, folks. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.